Hello, everybody. I wanted to give you an update because our first exam is coming up pretty soon. Um, in the online classes, you do have a little flexibility with when you take the exam, but it is timed. So you want to kind of set aside um, a period of time where you think you won't have very many distractions, where you have paper, pencil, calculator, um, and just sort of ready to go right and hopefully on a stable internet connection you are going to do all your work on paper which you're going to submit to me for grading because often what i find is people get one small part of a question incorrect but they've got the right idea so i like to give partial credit on exams even on alex exams which is where your questions are going to be posted so here's the setup right so objective two is do at 3 p.m. on Friday, the 24th. At 3.01 p.m., two things become available to you and Alex. One of them is your test. I don't recommend jumping into that right away unless you feel really, really, really confident about um, everything we've learned so far, uh, objectives one and two. The best strategy is to instead take the second assignment first. That would be the scheduled knowledge check. Okay, so that's pretty similar to the initial knowledge check that you took, except the topics are gonna be about what we've been learning. And so what it's gonna do is allow you to find out what you already know really well, and that will allow you to focus on what you don't know. Sometimes when you take a scheduled knowledge check, your mastery score in the course might go down. This tells you you've forgotten a few topics. That happens most frequently when it's been a long time since you've practiced that skill or when you have tried to learn too many things at one time. The brain can only hold on to maybe six ideas at once. So if you're like doing all your learning one day a week, two days a week, whatever it is, that might not be spread out enough for you. Neuroscience shows that if you spread your learning out over a longer period of time, it's easier to remember it when you take a test. So uh, in order to kind of facilitate that, this scheduled knowledge check will challenge you to remember the work you've done so far. Um, the way you get your mastery score back up is simply by doing the topics, okay? So it's gonna have you review anything uh, that you've forgotten since you initially learned it. Once you've reviewed everything in objectives one and two, that's the good, a good chance to jump in for the test, okay? So, and also if you don't feel like um, you have had enough review just based on the, the prompts that Alex gives you after you take the scheduled knowledge check, Remember that you can always go into that learning mode by clicking the hamburger in the upper left corner of Alex. Um, learning or review mode, either one is good. It opens up the topics. Again, you just need to study objectives one and two. Okay, so our dates are 301 on the 24th, which is a Friday. The scheduled knowledge check opens up. It's gonna close on Monday at 301. And then you have a study period between Monday and Friday. You can take the exam at any point in that period of time um, from Friday the 24th at 3.01 till Friday the 1st at 3 p.m. But you should be aware the exam is limited to one hour once you start it. You can't start it and go back you can't take longer than an hour, unless of course you have accommodations from the Office of Accessibility Resources. If you do have testing accommodations, you need to send me an email, even if you have previously sent me a document um, from OAR, because I have to set up each and every test individually. So every time you'd like your accommodations, I just need you to send me an email and tell me what they are, and also which class you're in. Okay, remember that I have five different sections to teach, okay? Um, and then I'm getting a lot of questions also about how to study for chemistry. So I covered it a little bit in my introduction video on the discussion forum. So if you didn't get a chance to see that, go check that out. But in general, it's 
a choose your own adventure situation. So I made available to you all of my lecture notes, which are Google slide documents and videos that accompany them. Um, I also have made available to you the text materials. So like, for example, for objective two, we can go right in here and see for objective two, we can go right into Blackboard and we can see under course documents, objective two, here's all your textbook links about everything in that objective. And then when you click on the words objective two here, it leads you to a series, here's your lecture notes, a series of videos and some simulations you can play with. These are kind of fun ways to learn how atoms are constructed out of protons, neutrons, and electrons to learn how to balance charges and use isotopic notation. And there's even a little game that makes a happy noise when you get it right. So that's fun. You could also learn about the Rutherford experiment and how it disproved the plum pudding model, which was from JJ Thompson. Um, and then of course we have a bunch, a lot of naming videos because Naming is a challenge, so a lot of people need to go over it several times to be good at it. And I find a good way to study with these is to try to name them yourself on paper from the lecture notes, and then watch me do it with you um, on the video. And then there's two apps here to help practice making compounds and um, kind of like balancing charges and understanding what an ionic compound is. A lot of people are confused by that idea. Okay, so you can, if you haven't already done those things, you can feel free to use them to whatever extent you think they're helpful. They're not graded. Um, although one of you have a journal prompt this week that is graded. And one of the things you might choose to do is use some of the questions I pose in the lecture material to answer your journal prompt. So this week's journal is, you can click on journal and then you're gonna click on exam one review questions. If you missed the reflection from, um, gosh, I think that was two weeks ago now, you can feel free to go in and add that if you hadn't had a chance to do that yet. Um, but mostly this week, you're gonna be spending time reviewing practicing, especially on naming, I would think, and getting ready for exam two. As always, I have lots of office hours. Please come and see me and ask for help when you're stuck. Um, if you feel like, like the work in Alex is not enough for you, I have lots and lots and lots of worksheets. All you've got to do is tell me what topic you're interested in learning more about, and I can send you all kinds of projects, worksheets, whatever you're interested in. Um, but the minimum amount of coursework that you need to do in terms of what's graded to pass the class is you have to complete your Alex, Alex objectives. You need to take the scheduled knowledge check by Monday at 3 p.m. And you really need to review before you take your test next week, okay? Um, then you've got your journal post and, and if you missed it the very first week, a discussion post, okay? So hopefully that helps you out. Um, but as always, if you have questions, email me, stop by my office hours. Um, I'm available whenever you need help. <laughs>